Peace. What's going on, guys? Leo and Pat here from THD. What's going on? Hope you guys are having a great day. It's another beautiful day in Cornwall today. We're vibing by the water. Uh, we got a special podcast for you guys today. A uh, little bit of an experiment that we've been working on behind the scenes. Um, so me and Pat are both avid coffee drinkers. Um, me a little bit less than Pat. I know Pat likes coffee a lot. Yeah, I drink probably about three to four coffees a day. So the effects of caffeine on me is not really the, the highest per se. And um, so, so for the last nine months, I decided to take a bit of a tolerance break from coffee just to see the effects on my body. And um, I got to give credit to uh, Michael Pollan. The idea I got from, uh, he was on the Joe Rogan podcast and he was talking about the um, effects that coffee had and how if you take three months off of coffee, um, the first cup that you have once again is going to be like the first cup that you ever had. Um, and this can be something that can be noted through like any type of substances like alcohol or cannabis. If you take a long time off of it, your tolerance seems to go down. And then when you take it, it becomes more effective. So um, I'm, I'm someone who tends to have a lot of energy on my own. So I, I don't resort to the coffee. But the one thing I will say is that I really miss the way it tastes. And I still love the way it smells every time someone would have a coffee around me. I would literally just be like, oh my God, that smells amazing. It smells so good. Um, and caffeine is just one of those substances that has that like um, collective aura to it. It has a collective identity, like it brings people together, like smoking, you know, like it helps people come together. And the history of coffee too is so fascinating, like the way it came to be and like the people that started off drinking coffee, all that stuff. All the different coffee grains that you can get as well. That the as well. The stronger ones, the darker ones, yeah, the lighter bro. ones. And uh, all them have different effects. They all have different effects too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we'll leave, we'll leave a link in the description for the history of coffee as well. A nice video for you guys to, to watch if you're interested in that. And then as well, I'll leave the link in the description to the uh, segment of the podcast where Michael Pollan was talking to Joe Rogan about uh, his experiences with coffee. Because it was very uh, entertaining for one, but it was also educational. Like he gave me a lot of um, intel and details on coffee that I hadn't known. So wouldn't you know it me and pat are here <laughs> and uh we're back drinking timmy's mm -hmm. i mean you couldn't ask for a better coffee than nothing timmy's. better yeah nothing better than timmy's <laughs> <laughs> but uh so i had started off just wanting to go for the three month period but i wasn't in a rush to get back into it and uh, and then ended up just being nine months so i thought it was triple would... yeah triple <laughs> three for three yeah, triple the experience yeah triple the vibe <laughs> um so that's why i figured i would document this experience with you guys and um i think it's going to be very interesting to see like the levels you guys are going to be able to catch my rate of speech my paralinguistics my body language is probably going to change because coffee is a drug like it's a it's a it's a stimulant mm -hmm. it's something that you guys we overlook a lot but it's what a lot of people rely on as well especially yeah, in the morning true. to wake up to get things mm -hmm. done you know if you gotta wake up early for work i know it's the first thing that i'm having in the morning as soon as i wake up and the smell oh, perks oh, you up the too smell, the smell like, gets just you the going. smell of making coffee like i know the girlfriend at home personally hates it she wakes up and smells the coffee and she's like oh my goodness i hate it <laughs> <laughs> but me like personally i love it it's what wakes me up i just want to have that cup when i smell it mm. so how's that taste Oh, that was the first sip. <laughs> Cheers, guys. First sip in nine months. Yes, sir. But um, delicious. Absolutely delicious. It has such a smooth taste. It rolls off the tongue, you know? Fills your palate. My mouth is like salivating. I want another sip right off the bat. <laughs> uh, if you guys are curious, two sugar, two honey. That's what I'm sipping on. I like to use honey to sweeten it up a little bit. Um, it makes it really sweet, actually. It makes it nice and sweet. Yeah. yeah, I find sometimes you can get a bitter coffee. It's been a while since I've had a coffee, but there are times where... You can get like a bitter coffee and the honey will like cancel that chance of, of happening. So mm -hmm. it cancels that out, which is nice. So round two, bro, this is delicious, <laughs> for real. I started drinking coffee. What about you? When did you start drinking coffee? I started drinking coffee, I want to say it would have been back in high school. So I would have been mm. probably about 14, 15, 14, when I 15. drinking coffee. Yeah, I think I was right around that 16, 16 age mark. I probably yeah. had an ice cap before I had a coffee. Oh, really? Like a, yeah. like a slushy, you know the slushy one? Yeah, of course, yeah. The ice cap, just because that's what everyone was drinking around me, and I was like, 
that looks pretty good mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> but afterwards i tried the coffee i think it was the same similar experience to um alcohol for me like i really did not enjoy the first sip of coffee i was like this is some strong because yeah, I, yeah. I had a black coffee oh, okay, off yeah, rip yeah. so usually coffee comes with like too sugar too honey see or right too, off the rip i went with double double That's double fine. double off the, yeah okay yeah. So you had that nice creamy taste to it yeah. right off the bat. Now I drink two milk, three sugar, because I can't do the creamy taste, the aftertaste, you know, in your throat and your mouth yes. afterwards. It I can't sticks. do it. Yeah. That's really smooth, man, I must admit. Yeah? Because this tastes a lot like a black coffee, just a yeah, lot sweeter. Yeah, you got sweeter. no milk, no nothing in it, so. I don't have any of that. I used to mix um, a nice, a little bit of almond milk or some, some um, yeah. cashew milk in my uh, coffee, and that was delicious. That mm -hmm. was really good. Yeah. I remember trying uh, that one coffee with a little bit of, what was it, hazelnut? Uh, yeah, the hazelnut, yeah, the hazelnut coffee, and the other one was um, vanilla coffee. They, That's were, what it was. they were both delicious. Yeah. So, so I still got some of that, actually. You still have some? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. This is nice. <laughs> Worth keeping it around. Yes, yeah, sir. Right off rip. It's only been uh, six minutes since we started recording, probably four two minutes since I started drinking coffee, I can definitely feel the effects. Really? Heavily. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's like... Okay. I feel a different um, sense of, like, connectivity to nature, one which I was not expecting. But also, just, like, my auric field seems bigger. Like, I feel like I have a more... Like, I'm more alert to shit around me. You know what I mean? Like, like there's I'm, more things going on now. Exactly, right? yeah. yeah. Like, before, I was just kind of, like, honed into, we're making this video, we're talking about the podcast, but now I'm, like, making the video, looking around, because it's beautiful outside, but also checking to see who's around mm -hmm. and shit. And, like, I feel my speech, uh, my rate of speech has increased. It as has. Well. It has quite a bit. Quite actually. a bit? Yeah. That's just hilarious. how many sips? What, like, three, four sips, maybe? I'm probably, I think about three, four sips. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of shake. A little bit of shake. A little bit of shakes too, going yeah. on. Do yeah. you see the vibe? <laughs> <laughs> For real though. But that's yeah. that's it though. That's um, that's something I definitely want to try with cannabis too. Like just taking a month off just to see how powerful it is. That's something Terrence McKenna was talking about. He was saying that like he finds that he appreciates marijuana more so when he um, pushes away from it and then comes yeah. back to it. And then again, it goes back to the tolerance. True. Right, right back Where to the you tolerance. You take a break from the cannabis and it'll lower your tolerance. And that way, whenever you smoke cannabis for the first time after a month, or let's say, stop for nine months with <laughs> the coffee. I could not do that with that. <laughs> I couldn't do that with the weed, bro. Yeah. It'd be a total different, uh, total different high than if you're smoking it every day. That's true. Hey, maybe and you guys never it. know. Could happen in the future. It could. It would be bet that content would be best coming from us too because we're avid smokers. Yeah. We're the type to really do it all the time, so it's like it's it would have the the biggest effect on us. We would learn the most from it. It's like that saying, you know, the best person to skydive is the person that's ter terrified of skydiving. That's true. You know, because they're gonna get the most out of that situation. And you overcome that fear too. That too, right? That's a big thing. That's a big thing. Mm. What do you think? You know what? Why don't we pause this video? We're gonna go right down to the smoking spot and true. We can blaze it down there. And we'll be right back. Yeah, true. We'll be <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh, the other thing. I, right before we close this little segment off, I wanted to talk about how uh, coffee freed us from the cycles of the sun, because that was something that Michael Pollan had spoken about, and I just thought that would be a really cool aspect to branch off of. So what I what I mean by that is more so like before people would only work from sun up to sundown because that's kind of like when they would have their energy and stuff but when the advent of, of coffee came out it actually freed us from the um like that regular time schedule because now people were able to pull overnight shifts and stuff with these and consistently because coffee was introduced to the and that's why you mm -hmm. s you see so many companies are are totally fine with giving people a coffee break why is that? Why would your Why would your uh, employer want to give you a break where you can consume a substance? It's because they're trying to get the most out of you, right? Like that substance is allowing you to work for longer and to be happier, and it's not expensive. So it's like mm -hmm. all of those things come together, and it's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That's why I have a coffee break every day, or that's why coffee is super cheap at work, or anything like that. Because, like, 
when else can you go take a break at work you know like there's no <laughs> other than the breaks that they give you like they're never really like oh pushing anything else down your throat and that's what, and not and not that they're pushing it down your throat but it's like anything like with uh with pornography and like with um food and stuff like the the marketing is so like what's the term point blank range it's just so excessive as well mm. there's so much marketing that pushes that stuff towards you that it forces you to think about it on a continuous basis and what you think about grows it's true but yeah i think that's a fascinating concept though that um coffee was able to free us from the rhythms of the sun and give us like more time in the day um it just it, makes people very dependent on caffeine though that's one point for sure and it definitely um it's not like you never need to sleep either like it catches up to you oh god yeah. if you stay up you know two three four days and you're you're doing a bender off of coffee you're gonna be probably sleeping for a solid a good day and a yeah. half maybe two days afterwards but that's the thing though is that if someone like me for say i drink three four coffees a day if mm -hmm. i have one at 11 12 o'clock at night i can still go to bed at one o'clock yeah in an hour or two Whereas somebody like you that only drank your coffee before this nine month segment, you yeah. only drank what one or two coffees a week, sometimes on a Saturday. I'd say that's a good guess. But if yeah, you had it at twelve right o'clock at night, would you be able to go to bed at one o'clock? No, o man. In the morning? I'd... You'd be up all night. <laughs> but I'd be the effects to on me are different than you is because obviously I become dependent on the caffeine, mm. and if I were to kick it, the the effects after six months obviously would be a lot more. That's true. I, I sure the hell wouldn't be able to sleep after after having a coffee at 12 o'clock at night in six months from now. But now I can, for sure. True. So. Yeah. Um, and that leads me to another point, too, that I wasn't even going to talk about. But there, there lies the power in nootropics, too. Like, taking things like natural supplements, mm -hmm. like melatonin or something. Whereas you wouldn't be able to, like, let's say you were dependent on smoking weed before going to bed. If you want to cut that out, then and you use something like melatonin to replace that additive, because melatonin is going to put you to bed. Trust me, oh. if you've never tried melatonin, it's putting uh -huh. you to bed. It's just that your tolerance builds up very quickly on it. So, like, what would usually put you to bed a week from now, if you've been taking it every day, won't be putting you to bed. Yeah, double that. Yeah, it's Most pretty much a double. Yeah, yeah. in a week frame, but um, but yeah, like it, there lies the power in nootropics because if you stay, if you have that type of thing, it allows you to create distance from that substance that you were attached to and mm -hmm. relying on. And then it allows you to um, like proceed and grow and to do uh, healthier things, healthier choices, mm -hmm. better mindsets come from that. And um, if it's the opposite too, like a good example I can think of for coffee, if you're trying to not take as much coffee and you find like coffee is something that interests you in things and it helps you like spark your creativity and stuff i would suggest maybe trying something like lion's mane mushroom it's a natural mm. supplement and it really helps you get interested in redundant tasks little things you know like any type of little system or um like way of thinking it just adds so much interest to your day-to-day -day life and i think that that's a valuable thing to uh, definitely yeah in, in corporate especially if you do it with um with a meaning behind it you know like if you incorporate it just to see how it feels that's one thing but if you incorporate it to like, like, like improve yourself and it's funny because I, I can tell i'm talking faster now there's a little <laughs> bit of stuttering going on too it's funny but to improve yourself but also to like replace old habits because old habits don't just die away we need to replace old habits with new habits mm -hmm. um, integration over motivation right it's true you know so that's a good point i think uh yeah. We're going to go down by the tree. We'll talk to you guys in a minute. Peace. Peace. What up? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back, Reflection. <laughs> hey, so we just had a bit of an idea. We figured we'd roll up a quick spliff and uh, work on the counterbalance between the coffee and the twist. Take a look at that. Right now we're smoking on some Khalifa Kush. Shout Don't out Liz. Love the KK. KK. <laughs> mm. These people going by on a boat are about to get a nice little whiff of the KK. Mm. There's enough to share. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, I figured that'd be a good idea because I'm a I'm a daily smoker personally. I smoke my cannabis daily, so having the counter effects between the two, because caffeine is really like a pick me up. It gets you excited and. Some people can smoke weed if they're smoking sativas for pick-me-ups as well and for a nice head rush, but I usually stick to my Indicas. I like to relax when I smoke and yeah. slow things down. Yeah, more of an Indica person as well. I'm not, not a 
I'm not a huge fan of the sativa per se. Indica is always better. Always hits a little harder too. Ooh. Damn, that Kalita Kush tastes so good. <coughs> a little game for you guys, a little bit of free games. A lot of time if you've got some uh, some Kush that's going dry or if you need it to have a little bit more punch. Ooh. We've been taking a little bit of an orange peel, lemon peel, lime peel. <coughs> you could even take a piece of a banana peel. Not too much. Just <coughs> not, a little. not too much, true. Put that in the bag and I would I would recommend, you don't have to, but a mason jar, a glass mason jar will keep your bud fresh for much longer. Yeah. But uh, it's something I used to do actually when I used to sell back in the day. I would put a little bit of uh, orange peels in the bag if it was lower strains and it make it smell like Zah. It would smell like quads, you know what I mean? People would take one whiff of that and be like, I'm buying the whole bag. But just for personal use though, the reason I recommend it is because of the moisture it provides in there. Um, when your weed gets dry and shit and it's like tough to roll, it's just because it needs a little bit of moisture. Mm. And uh, that can be infused through, like I said, any of those peels and get creative with it. You know, there's more more things that we haven't mm. tried yet, but. Oh, there's so many more suggestions out mm. there. People got their own remedies to keep their weed fresh, you know? That's what it is, bro. It's a remedy and it's mm. a medicine. Mm. That's why I can even feel the vibes different right now. It's not like if I was sober and I was uh, smoking and getting into that zone but i definitely i definitely feel more like calm and collected and like centered in terms of before we we sparked this split mm. well you're a little more uh, agitated per se your your word of speech like you're speaking a lot faster than yeah. what you are right now that's for sure that's because <coughs> of the cannabis in my opinion fuck yeah i think so too 100 percent cbd joint guys i'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a joke. <laughs> Catch that. <laughs> mm. One thing I will say though is that coffee is such an elite drink to be mixing with. with oh, cup God, in front yeah. of my face. Whether you're uh -huh. smoking a, a cigarette, I used to smoke cigarettes, or like any type of anything you smoke, like any strain. I mean, when you're smoking weed, coffee mixes so well with it, and it cleanses your palate. It gives you like a, it's kind of like a mini roller coaster ride, honestly. You're going up, you're going down, you're going up, you're Pretty going much, down. Yeah. It's like, I guess it, if it was used properly, it could be some kind of, some kind of like mental training. You know what it I mean? It could be, like, yeah. It could be some type of, because you're pushing yourself to certain extremes in a short period of time, which is expanding the muscle, which is the brain. Because mm -hmm. the brain is just the muscle. It's true. How's that Khalifa Kush? Delicious. No, I'd love to have it with some coffee, but I already drank mine. <laughs> <laughs> True. You want a sip? No, I'm good, thank you. Mm. I need a little bit of milk in mine. <coughs> <coughs> Oof. Yeah, guys. Big difference. I figured I would uh, <coughs> <coughs> take the time to go through this process with you guys because... <laughs> it piqued my curiosity. It piqued our curiosity. Mm -hmm, definitely. And so we figured there's plenty of like-minded individuals out there. And the best way to reach out to you guys, to connect with you guys, is to straight up connect with you guys through the internet. Yeah. And hey. <laughs> Go ahead. If you guys want to try out the challenge, try it out for a month, try it out for three months, mm. try it out for six, reach out. Thinking. Let us know your intentions. Let, me, let us know how it went. Yeah and uh why you're thinking about kicking the caffeine also is a big thing too if you're trying to quit because you're drinking too much because your uh, your sugar levels are too high like i myself am a uh, borderline diabetic so i had to really watch my sugar intake and i had to cut down on coffee before i was drinking six eight coffees a day <laughs> now i'm down to three or four it's not a huge difference but it makes a big difference yeah um, but yeah, no, let us know if you guys want to go out and try uh, the caffeine challenge, no caffeine for X amount of months, let us know, reach out. Absolutely. Very well said. Leave a comment down below, do all that stuff, interact with us. Oh, how about the split go out? Because we're having that vibe, that talk, putting game on, but uh, we're definitely going to keep pushing more content in our private Facebook groups as well. You guys want to join those, you just go on our website, you know how to do that. Um, but I think there's a lot of value that can be provided in hanging with like-minded individuals. And because we have access to the internet, we really have a privilege to be able to access them 
in an international manner. You know? Oh yeah. So that's something that uh, me and Pat are definitely going to be taking a lot more initiative on throughout this year, and we're going to be um, connecting with you guys one on one. You know, like whether it be Discord, Patreon, YouTube comments. Um, you guys are part of our family now. It's THD forever. TMC mm -hmm. through THD. You know, a lot of this stuff carries on, and mm -hmm. it carries weight. But yeah, that it is. Sorry guys, I was just uh, watching this nice boat go by on this beautiful day, enjoying the weather outside. Sure. It's survive. Ain't no place I'd rather be than with the birds, bees, leaves, and trees. Uh-huh. Yeah, you do know. It's nice out here though. Hey. Hey man. If you guys, um, I guarantee if you guys make a practice of spending 30 minutes in nature every single day, you're going to notice your mood goes up heavy. You're going to notice you're recharging your batteries in a manner that other people can't do for you, you know? And it's it's um, something I heard this week that was very important. It's nobody's in charge of making sure you're okay, but you, you know? Like you're the first person that needs to check in with yourself and see like how that shit's going and like how you feel every day. And if you're not happy, then you need to do something about that. And it needs to come from you first because the only person that can do it is you. Absolutely. Right? You're number one. It's true. Yeah, I remember that. Ah. A blessing. Love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Peace. Peace, Peace meaning uh, positive energy always creates elevation. Yeah. So uh, carry that with you when you move around. You know, you bring peace to other people. Understand that that peace stays with them. It's something that you're providing and you're giving because you have all this love in you. And you and it takes a strong man to be able to love someone else and to like put that on his shoulder and like to forgive people and shit. And I know it sounds a little sweet, but it really is the definition of growth because the person you're loving is you. When you really go out of that way or like I'll flip it like on the other perspective, if you're disrespecting people and you're like looking at people with a judgmental eye or anything like that, well, then those type of things are being done to yourself as well. You're being very judgmental to yourself and you're being hateful towards yourself. And I speak through experience. So. Uh, just at the end of this challenge, we'd like to take a, a moment to challenge you guys to go with um, to go with beginning the process of becoming your own best friend, because I think that this is a very important thing. And it, it's a it's a it's a pillar that can help you and be a stepping stone for the later days. Definitely. So we leave you with that. Come as we go. <laughs> you already know. Love you guys. Love you guys. THD. Have a great day. Yes, sir.